In the last video, we discussed how I use OBS and some custom software to produce an RTMP stream in the style of a TV channel. I'll probably return to that in more detail in future, but for now let's look at how I convert an RTMP stream into an analog video signal. The setup for this is actually really simple, all you need is a Raspberry Pi and some way to get analog video out of it. The older Pis have a proper funnel port right on the board, but unfortunately anything more recent is going to need a converter cable. These are readily available, but do be aware that not every cable is available with the same pinout. Some will have the sockets in a messed up order. You may also wish to add an external sound card. Now personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with the quality of the Pi's built-in audio for this purpose, but it is a bit too quiet for a lot of modulators. I decided to build a sub-rack module for my IP to analog converter. This is just a 5HP kit from RS with a, some prototype board used to mount everything. All the actual electronics are off the shelf modules which I've just connected together. On the top left you can see I've used a Raspberry Pi Zero in this build. Now this happens to be the version with Wi-Fi but I'm not using the Wi-Fi. I've soldered female headers to the Pi's GPIOs and also four additional pins used to bring out composite video and a reset line. This allows me to connect it to the motherboard with a set of male header pins. Below the Pi is a special Ethernet module. This supplies the unit with both a network connection and also powers everything via PoE. This is a standard module that you can get from the Pi Hut for about 20 quid. I've just taken it out of its case and shortened the lead a bit for this purpose. Finally, on the left, you can see the audio DAC I've used. Now, to be honest, this is one I happen to have lying around for ages. I think it was from some random Chinese eBay seller. Anyways, I've connected it up to the Pi via I2S and it works perfectly well. You can also see on the left, that's where I've brought out the video signal. Now, personally, I'd rather use BNC sockets for a job like this, but I had Hafano sockets at the time, so that's what I used. Realistically, it won't make much difference for this job anyway. So now we have the hardware, how do we actually make this thing work? If you look around online for video players on the Raspberry Pi, you'll come across a lot of folks raving about VLC Media Player or M Player or MPV or something like that. And these are great, no doubt, but for ease of use and lightweight operation, I still think nothing beats good old OMX Player. OMX Player doesn't require a desktop to be running and is perfectly happy to be run from an SSH command line or a systemd service without causing massive amounts of heartache to get it working properly. Unfortunately, since it's technically been discontinued now, we need to install the legacy version of Raspberry Pi OS to be able to use it, but again, that's no big loss for our purposes anyway. Once Raspbian has been flashed to a micro SD card, there's only a few things we need to set up. Since I live in the UK where we use the PAL colour system, the first thing I do is open up the config.txt file and set SDTV mode to 2 and SDTV aspect to 3. This sets the video output for PAL with a 16:9 aspect ratio. Next, I have a line to disable the Pi splash screen, enable I2S, disable Wi-Fi, and configure an external activity LED. Now I can install OMX Player and run it with a TV connected up to see if it's all working, which it is. Right, so it's working, now we want to make sure this thing is as close to broadcast standard as we can with a 10 quid computer. According to the ITU specs, an active picture needs to start on line 23 and end on line 623 vertically and should begin about 10.5 microseconds after the falling edge of the sync pulse, ending about 1.5 microseconds before the next pulse. We can verify how close the Pi is to this spec by connecting it up to a Tektronix 700T from 1998. If you don't have one of these, which most people aren't, you might have an oscilloscope, otherwise really you're stuck trying to calibrate it from your TV, which isn't ideal, but I suppose it'll work. You can see here that we have a signal appearing on line 23 and half a line 623, so I'd say that's about spot on, no complaints there. Next we'll do the horizontal alignment. Just looking at this TV with a test card on shows that we're a wee bit too far to the left, 
let's switch to peak white again and take a measurement on the scope. Turns out the measurement is uh, 10.25 microseconds. So how come that's out of spec? Well, what's happening is, for some reason, the Pi's frame buffer is starting a bit late. So the actual hardware is outputting a proper signal, but it's cropping off the edge of the frame buffer. Fortunately, OMX Player has a way to compensate for this. All we need to do is adjust the window across pixel by pixel until we see the edge go in slightly on the scope. And there we have it, a perfect picture. Now granted I'm not a broadcast engineer, so there could still be something glaring wrong with this, but it looks pretty good to me. A lot better than some other solutions I've seen anyway. In the next video we're going to talk a bit about inserting teletext on the TV channel, and a couple of different ways of doing it. But for now, thanks for watching.